Chicago Sam coming with the win. Super Puppy, Super Puppy Podcast, Super Puppy Podcast, the best podcast, Super Puppy Podcast, the best. This is Super Podcast, Puppy Podcast, the best podcast. Better than the rest, Super Puppy Podcast. Bust your shots in your ass, Super Puppy Podcast. Don't sleep. Welcome, welcome to the latest episode of the Super Puppy Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Minor, aka Chicago Slim and his bitch. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. The name of this episode, I like to, you know, I like to do a play on words with my names to see. So the name of this one is Melanina's Jacket. Ooh. And we'll talk about the inspiration behind the title, but I had to to bring that one out because my today's guest is a favorite of mine. If you have grown up or lived in DC from about 2009, seven, eight, yeah. yes, on, you will have heard this name because she was so. blazing the trails of comedy oh back then. So oh. <laughs> No, you're fabulous. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Freddie Brunel is here today. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Freddie. How you doing? I'm doing fabulous. Yes, you look fabulous. I love well, your shirt. Well, thank you. XO. 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 Carl. Little hugs and kisses. Thank you. For you and yours. Thank you so much. Freddie Brunel hails all the way from New Mexico. <laughs> well, New Mexico. New Mexico. It's yeah. I went to high school there, and my dad was in the military, so I'm from all over. What's your like? Is that where you play? Like, it's hard. Do y'all have like a hand signal? Um, like, no. I don't know. We're not that cool in New Mexico, <laughs> yeah. okay? Um, is there like an Albuquerque like slang y'all call it the Kirk or something? There is a tone of voice. It sounds a little bit like California. Like oh, they okay. say, we're supporty. Oh, know, like, okay. It's a little thing to the voice. Well, it's funny. Like that. Yeah, but I, I also went to school here a little bit, middle school, and so I know how to have on people. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just like to do it. All right. I'm trying to figure That's out. It's like good question. J O N E. That's too simple. The E and J O E. I just like. If somebody knows, talk. let us know. How you spell Joan? Just talk. Okay. Stand up comedian. Do you want me to stand up now? No, no. no. Oh. <laughs> gotta be clear. <laughs> well, that's what you're okay. known for. That's how I know Freddie. Because, as I like to bring up Kathy Nima and Take Me Tuesdays. Oh, I remember those spots. That's where we met. Yes. And she was able to do her thing. Freddie used to do ballet moves on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very physical comic. <laughs> yes. yes, I remember Janet Jackson, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yes. That was Angry Janet when Janet got mad. She's probably doing that now in lieu of her Divorcing and well, depends on that out. settlement. She mm. might be like, Thank you, no, thank you, thank I mean, you. Uh, and, and, it's and, getting and, richer, and, getting richer, it's and getting richer. God bless Janet Jackson. You know what? Joe Jackson is in the hospital. Oh my goodness, with terminal cancer. Are you serious? And he's not letting anybody see him. I read that today. They must have kept that quiet. Yeah, wow, so, that, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, I bless you, Joe. You made the Jackson. He did, you know. I don't claim him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to live through my child too. <laughs> that gets you money. Honey. Dance. Exactly. Okay. Hit. He can lay down in peace because he's he's done a marvelous job. You, you know. So you know, Catherine is somewhere like. Oh, I know she loves him. Joe, she loves she? Joe, man. If that oh if that little God. movie, the Jacksons movie, was anything accurate, she loved him. She loved. They're, they're still married. They a lot are. of people, yes, they are still married. Oh, he had a girlfriend. He has a he had a baby and a girlfriend and whatever. But that's loyalty because they're not gonna let that Jackson money get out. Okay. And she's like, you mother, you better, you better. You can stick it where you wanna stick it. Exactly. But you get that. Could you be that kind of way? Uh no. No. <laughs> I can't get any done. it. I'm a little hood. <laughs> I be breaking bottles and stuff, you know. I, what? I'm killing people. Oh snap, throw an earring, okay. earring, throw an earring, earrings popping off. Okay, uh, I don't play. No, I don't like that much class. She's a class act. See guys, that was called physical humor. The, the earring popped mm -hmm. off with such timing and precision. <laughs> because my earrings know me. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> she said, she, if I'm about to fight, I take off my earrings. This earring just said, let me go ahead and jump off. <laughs> Cause before she jump off. Right. So she ain't got time. Yes. Exactly. Okay, writer of comedy. Yes, I write. I do that. We'll talk about inspirations. Mother of a beautiful oh baby God. girl. Thank you so much. I love her. I cannot believe as old as I was <laughs> having her that she would be so cute. Oh, right. Because, <laughs> you know, when you're an older mom, you're expecting the baby to have one eye, <laughs> yeah. one arm, I don't know. And you're like, she's fine. But she was, she was okay. I'm glad, God bless, <laughs> God bless. Devil rebuker. Yes, yes, ah, uh, yeah. Because Satan's all around. <laughs> I mean, your friends, in your drinks, every, see? Gotta so you have close. to, I gotta, like Wonder Woman, like pew pew. You yes. Gotta, you gotta keep the devil out your life. You gotta know how to be like, I rebuke you. No weapons formed against me. In the name. In the name. Okay. <laughs> you had to raise the room yes. on the end. Yes. Botox queen. Is that a fact or a joke? I plan to do Botox. Oh. <laughs> Everywhere, like. Yes. One of these days, honey, you're not even gonna know if I'm crying or sad. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a movie with Charlie Theron, and I was like, I have never seen an evil villain okay. that just smiled. She's just I'm like, going to kill everyone. Botox is like stiff. I saw these drag queens once, and they were like kicking. Mm -hmm. One of them laughed, and the face was just like, ah! <laughs> no emotion. It didn't even like just young. <laughs> Right now, I have on my tight headband. This is a poor woman's facelift. Oh, yes. A tight ponytail. <laughs> am I right? A tight scarf is the poor woman's ponytail. And so is a weave now. Oh. Well, that's a rich woman's facelift because yes. these weaves are not cheap. Put them on tight. And then you get those eyebrows up. Your skin is like. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I have to stay young looking with a four year old. Yeah, you do. Because they're like, oh, okay, that's your mother and your grandmother. <laughs> Yes, I almost fought somebody. Is that grandma? <laughs> Bitch. Your no, area was like, what? Yes. Did she try to carry me? I was like, really? <laughs> this thing is inside grandmother. Okay. What you about to get with these fists? That's 20 years old down there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> can we say that? Yes. So um, probably podcast. Okay. We can say anything. I'm so sorry <laughs> if I've offended. No, that's what we hope. No, we're not that place. We love everybody. We want people to laugh that laugh, right? Okay, so how long have you been doing comedy? I think I started comedy in 2008. What, what brought you to the stage? I was like, have you ever heard the book, What Colors Your Parachute? Uh-huh, I have it up there. So I kind of was going through that and trying to figure out what I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And I actually saw an episode of Oprah that said, look in your year Shout book. out to Oprah. Hello, Oprah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it's a go back to your high school days. And that time you can kind of see the things, see the things that made you interested in life and what you wanted to do. And I noticed that in my yearbook, everyone said, funny girl, you're funny, hilarious. And this is like, in high school, right. even in my middle school book. So I was like, you know, but who, but at the time, who grows up and says, what do you want to be when you grow up? A comedian, right? <laughs> right. Nobody like, says that. Okay. Right. So I was like, wow, I, I really want to be a part of TV and maybe comedy, anything mm -hmm. entertaining that like, you know, then I decided to volunteer. I already had a full-time job, but I decided to volunteer at DC Television. Mm -hmm. Woo -woo. Yes, hi DC TV. Hey, and I was <laughs> learning how to work cameras and doing all this stuff and people were like, you should be in front of the camera. Particularly one person, his name was Michael. I got Mike's last name, but he was a comedian and he was like, look, come out and do three minutes and see if it's something you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I, I, comedians were shady. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did come out and then he finally got mad at me. And I was like, this person really cares about me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, my funny is my life. So I actually came out for three minutes dressed like a school teacher. I have a video of it. I was like, who is that old man? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I look like a fifth grade school teacher. That um, was 
school mom. Yes, <laughs> yes. But people laughed for like three minutes, I don't remember what, and I had a little piece of paper in my hand, and people laughed. Yeah. And that felt good. It was just a great feeling that people got whatever it is I was writing about, uh -huh. was talking about, so. So you've been, been writing ever since. Ever since. So, what was your worst comedy experience? My worst comedy experience, my God, it's been so many. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I think it was being clapped off the stage. <laughs> I think I'd rather be booed than, okay, boo. Yeah, <laughs> get your ass off the stage. Get off the stage, it's been real. So, <laughs> I was in Atlanta and it was just not a good show for me, so. And what did you say, didn't he bring you out to some, some set up music? Yes, everybody got these cool rap songs. So you know, I'm a female, so he thinks, okay, I'm going to uh, bring her up in, uh, on the, the Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> Bet you think your girlfriend's hot. Like, your girlfriend's hot. Like me brown. Your girlfriend was a freak like me. Don't ya? So I'm just like, oh my god. So people <laughs> get in their heads that maybe I asked for that song. So they already yeah, have you gotta come out body rolling. Right. You gotta you come to out. Right. Yeah. That's and my, you know, my I wasn't looking like no pussy cat. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking like maybe a, a little chunky put together, <laughs> you know. So it just set me up for failure to me. And they were like, and they were like, you yes. didn't deliver. Sorry, we expect to put together. Yes, and the guy said, "Thank you for coming, but the poetry class is down the street. Shame. This here is comedy." Shame. Isn't that shame? <laughs> shame. And they laugh more at his statement than my comedy. All right. Ah! You know, it was that way. way. It's like you know. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Don't try like me. I mean, well, if you could redo that moment, how would you come out now? <laughs> With some music, like a dude. <laughs> Unless I had a shape like that, and I could come out with something funny where people would laugh, but. It was just, I would come out with just straight up. The, whatever the, the men came out with, I would come out with the same. Yeah, they set you up. Like, here we go, y'all. Oh, it was terrible. Sean didn't do that. Sean was my DJ at uh, Red Lounge. Oh, okay. He didn't set people up, did you? Uh, there was one, uh, <laughs> one dude that was, you know, making fun of me in the DJ booth. Oh, and he said, you know, when he, uh, when he, Left, I was all move, bitch. Ah, yeah. the way he like this, I love it. <laughs> and you he looked at me, it. and we're ready to fight. <laughs> oh, you could play Nucky if you but if he came back. Like, no, we not get in there. Let's get up in this DJ booth. Oh, you so passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> the attitude is so good. Because he would be like, like wow, wow, wow. He would say, yo, 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 <laughs> that DJ really say your mama? <laughs> that yes. Way. Yes. It was that way. Okay, let's get let's get let's put a serious Barbara Wawa hats on. Okay, let's okay. do it. Yeah. Do did you ever feel any discrimination being a woman as a being a woman comedian? Because you know how like you go to these open mics and you go to sets and it's mainly men that take over the scene. Yes. So did you feel discrimination being a woman and even more so being a black woman? Or was it just the woman thing first, they didn't really get into that. Well, I just think that um, funny is funny. You know, so no matter what you experience outside of the stage, once you get on the stage, funny is funny. Yeah. So a lot of times when I felt like I was treated indifferently, but when I would perform and some of those guys wouldn't be as funny as me, it was vindication. Yeah. It was like, yeah, you could make me wait to get on stage. You could pay me less. You could do all these things. But once I get on stage, I'm going to show you that women are funny, our stories are funny, and that we're here to stay, and you're going to have to accept it. So, and you're going to end up, yeah, you paid me pennies now. Yeah. You're, you're being shady now, but you're going to pay me because it's going. I'm going to show you that I'm worth every dollar. And that's the worst revenge. I believe so. When you can just turn it back around, it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna just don't, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna just show you. Yeah, that's how I carry things. And then sometimes it would be a discrimination, like, or or people would. Well, let me take that back. Let me say that sometimes people wanted women 
to be in that show. Mm -hmm. And then men would feel like, well, you only got that show because they wanted women. Or females. You know, they wanted females to perform and they felt like, you know, we need to be more diverse and stuff like that. But only if somebody told them they wanted that or some higher ups or like, yeah, I will say in all the industries, like maybe com like in comedy, women are discriminated against because of pay, but opportunities, not so much. Like women have. I feel like, yeah, from my experience is that because I was a woman, and and that I and because I, you know, that I had a, a fan base, I guess. If you want to call okay, it. Okay, I'm one, honey. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll pay you later. Right. So, yeah. So, I feel like that, you know, that people would have some kind of feeling about, you know, paying you, but then you would show them on stage, you know. Like, this is why. This is how I pay you. Right. You, you're going to pay me. In this here <laughs> face crack. Okay? You're going to pay me eventually. I love cracking faces. Like if people oh, underestimate and then you come back and it's just like. You just gotta show them that sometimes women, people come in before you even say anything and they think that women, oh, I don't find women funny. People have told me that. Like all women, none of them are funny. Right, you don't give them a chance. Like they may pick out one, but she has a, she might have a manly style. <laughs> you know, a projection or whatever, I don't know. She's a, a manly style. Yeah, but I hope no one's ever said that about me. Our stories are good. So. Okay. Here's another question. <laughs> Wine break. Wine break. Super tricky one. Delicioso. It was so fresh. So fresh. <laughs> okay. Do all laughs matter? Now, when I was, whenever I have comments on the show. I always ask them this question because I think about like sometimes when you're on stage you get like that one person that's just like ah! oh yeah and Love then it. it'll be like you know or you get a whole crowd that's just giving you those sympathy kind of like <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. so do you feel success when you're like okay well we did it I, I made it to the stage tonight mm -hmm. or do you feel really successful when you get like those big hearty laughs like of course people want the hearty laugh. Yeah. But there's so many things that could uh, change the dynamics of that show. You could have had a comedian that came before you that wasn't funny. They like they <laughs> the just day, it's like made everyone want to kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you and then you have to do work hard to bring them back, but you may not know that yeah. as a younger or newer comedian coming into the game, mm -hmm. that that person just killed it. So I'm gonna have to, you know, now I gotta them, like, like bring them back up, you know? I mean, kill it and killing them dead. Like, right. I mean, kill it and like, oh, you're so good. Yeah. So it just depends on, you know, sometimes it's a, the show might be too late or it just, it just can be so many variables, you know, that make a person, like, make a show hot and then not. Yeah. But do you feel, like, if you know that you're going to this late night show, people might be tired. Am I satisfied with these lazy laughs? No. no. If, you, if you love comedy and you want to, and you, your goal is to get, just to, to have everybody screaming and hollering, you want them big juicy laughs. Yeah, and it's funny because, like, that. And people, if you go to comedy shows and you hear, like, when, when comics are doing their set and then they catch that one person that's like, ha! Nine times out of ten, they get called out. Like, you you, you feel me? You know, because yeah. it's like a connection. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. how y'all supposed to be left. Stay with that positive connection. Yeah. If you look at him, one chick said to me, wow. Oh. The whole show, she said, wow. Wow. I said, is that what you're saying, babe? <laughs> right. I mean, are you, do you have, are you such a blank? <laughs> Wow. Nice. Yes, it's a whole thing. And some people do things just to mess with comedians. Yeah. That is so you true. have to have stuff in your pocket or you have to just focus on the people that are laughing. You have to. And then why don't they do that at other people's jobs? <laughs> they do. They do the same thing. There's somebody in your office saying, You're great, they do a great job, I like them, I like them. And then there's somebody else who says, Wow. They're okay. <laughs> Tomato tomato. You know, they're okay. Just haters. Yeah. I guess we need haters. Do you agree with that too? I think you do. Because sometimes, you know. They keep you strong. Yeah, you gotta show them. Like, okay, you want 
you know, sometimes you need that that thing to push you to do something better. Like, you know, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm like, all right. Can't kill okay, me. so last but last, no, a couple more questions. Okay. Do you feel like it's important to mentor new comics? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important because I had mentors. You know, when I first started comedy, I came in doing cursing, cursing this, cursing that. Because I thought that that's what people were listening like, to. Motherfucker, bitch, ass. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know so I'm sitting here because a lot of times I've come from after work. I had a professional job. So I'm in a suit, Sam. I'm like, boop. <laughs> that mother beat. So, you know, I was like, Freddie, you don't have to curse. The, the funniest thing is to be funny without all the cursing. Really? Yes. Be really? funny like yeah. that. And that way you can make more money. Like, I can I can work in clean rooms. I can work in blue, green. I can work in any room because my somebody who mentored me taught me that that's not my value. It's in a bunch of cursing. Yeah. You can really, you know, you can really cut yourself out of a lot of things if you don't curse so much. Especially, man, maybe just as a woman too, because like a cussing ass woman is maybe not the most appealing. Maybe. <laughs> it depends, <laughs> honey. Some of them rooms I done been in. Come on, look at the animal. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> right. So it depends on where you go. It you does. Know? In Hoodville, they love it. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. this could be paying though. This could be giving you them coins. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for playing comedy questions with us. All right. Ooh. Now we're going to turn. Oh, one more thing. One more thing we almost forgot about. Your trajectory as a comic, we did not touch on. So, where you were. So That's a big word. Trajectory. Yeah. Explain to the people that don't know the. What that word is. You can even do that with a dad. Freddie's trajectory. Okay, there it is. <laughs> that is so, that's big. So you had mentioned previously, before when we were talking about Bob Sumner, Russell Simmons, and Jamie Foxx, oh and Lil yes. Rail. Yes, it's like when you're destined to do something, when you love what you do and you'll almost do it for free, almost. <laughs> um, you just, you know, I just had things open up for me. Like, you know, um, Bob Sumner would always call me even after I had a child. Like, when are you coming on stage? And that's huge for someone connected with Death Jam to yeah. say, when are you coming back? That just, you know, it makes you feel so proud and so good about what you're doing or what you did. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I worked... Uh, Briefly with Donnie Simpson on the radio. I would actually, green eyes is what we call yes, him on the street. He's such a sweet man with his fine self. Uh -huh. And I did the breakfast comedy club thing we did in the morning. I was the gossiping beautician. I would actually be on the radio in the morning and then go to work. Yes. How did so, that help with you? Like, were you going to work like, shh? Or I were mean, you like, what? No, because I kept it separate. Oh, uh, okay. Because I didn't I don't bring comedy on my job because what I do is serious because I ensure that the national airspace is safe for the flying public. Thank you. That was beautiful. Okay. Thank that you. Was that's scary up there. Yeah, so you know, I just didn't mix that. Mm -hmm. But you know, every now and then somebody would be at the club when I would perform and be like, Oh, you're you work at and you're a comedian, so, you know, you just wanted to be, take it down a thousand. I want to be respected at work. Right. So it was a balance, but it was a beautiful balance. Can you imagine working? I got a check by Russell Simmons. Yes. I still have a copy of it. Okay. Like, of course, I cashed it. I was like, what did that work? Cash that. <laughs> I wish I could cash the copy. <laughs> but anyway, that sounds like a federal law broke in. I'm not trying to go to jail. Not right no. now. No, no, no. Yes, yeah, so I mean, I was working with all these people and doing these things. I, I, um, I always uh, ran into Little Rel, who has been on um, several movies and TV yeah, shows. Yeah, right. Get Out. Little Rel, yeah. So, you know, I was in a competition with him, and he was in the top five. We were both in the top five. So to be rolling with that kind of crew, yeah. these people are just blown up, showing. <laughs> I, you know, I was just excited. So, you know, that to know that I was in that place at one time and then I got knocked up. <laughs> we love and, her. And we have a baby now, so. 
So do you think that you could come back? You know what, my mother is planning to move here. My problem has always been that I didn't have family in this area mm -hmm. and Same. nobody to keep her. And a lot of comedians that are women have people to keep their children, you know, to stay with them or whatever. And I don't have that support yes, system. Yes, So, and I'm not gonna leave my baby with anybody. Right. So, and I don't even wanna leave her with my mom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My mom is family. My mom's seventy. She'll be sleep. The baby sleep. <laughs> She'll be sleep before the baby. So <laughs> I'm just scared every time I think about them two together. But you know, at least you have that support system, and it's hard. You know, I, she didn't ask to come here. Yeah. And my comedy career, unfortunately, cannot be come before my child. Right. Right. You know. So and it's hard. You know, you see your friends blowing up on TV and. You know, uh, just so many people doing so many things, and you're sitting here breastfeeding. Right. <laughs> like, oh, when I you got 30 pounds on you, <laughs> you're breastfeeding. Like, I could have been that. I <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't go bitter, but you do. You know, I know there are comedians out there not gonna admit it, but you yeah. do be like, I should have been me. That should have been me. Should have yeah. been me. <laughs> Okay, so is there a comeback in the works once mom moves? Once Come on, mama. mama comes and then I can get out more, I'm going to come back because it's, I feel like it's something I was born to do. Yeah. You know, I love making people laugh. Yeah, yeah it's funny. It's You're good at it. It's great. Well, thank you. I think we need that. to have more comedians, female comedians that do physical comedy. Yeah. yeah. Because most women, like, you know, nowadays they just kind of like to yeah. and do a, a, a mild act out. Yeah. But like when somebody <laughs> is out there getting it and like showing you what it is, it's hilarious. I like the the <laughs> See, <setup>. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. Sean was just laughing. Were, yes, he was about to throw money at you. Girl. When you really getting it, that's physical. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, I never forget being in a competition for Funniest Fat. And you could hear the, the video guys. on YouTube. Well, oh, I don't know. <laughs> you could hear the guys who in the competition say, a couple of guys were talking, they were like, yeah, if you like that physical stuff. But I, but I wasn't just physical. Mm -hmm. I, I joke, set up, punchline. I do that whole thing too. Yeah. And I think that people should respect all kinds of comedy. It's great. You know what I'm saying? All styles. And they didn't. But I won, so. Oh okay. <laughs> It works. <laughs> yes, I won the 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 comp, the vote from the audience and the vote from the judges. Yes, so, congratulations. Yes, that was many moons ago. We definitely think you're a winner here. Well, Super I appreciate you guys digging me down. You just dig up a grave and bury <laughs> me, girl. I just dug me. What you doing? You just dug me out of grave. Okay, wine break. Yes. Okay. We need to do a toast. Oh my God, toast to. Fabulous females in comedy. That's right. And future endeavors. Oh my God, that's even better. Thank you. Right. And now we're gonna play a game that I've created in my mind's eye. With shout out to Michelle Major because she has some writing credits. Right, writing credits on this game. Michelle, <laughs> thank you, my girl. And Sean too, but you don't get a credit. Yes. <laughs> you don't get a credit. <laughs> okay, the name of this game is Milan. Sorry, Melanina's J. Okay. Okay? Mm. Also the name of the show. Come with me. Come with me on a joy ride. All right. Uh, a couple days ago, our first lady of the United States, which should probably be the last lady, but neither here nor there. She ain't was, my first lady. She ain't my first lady. You know our first lady. lady. Yes. Okay. Misha. My jacket that said I really don't care do you she wore this jacket she disembarked the SUV the uber supreme with the black truck walked onto the plane in a jacket that said I really don't care do you so tasteless got on the plane changed into another jacket outfit which was dumb saw the little kids mm -hmm. God bless their souls got back on the plane changed back into I really don't care to you. Disembark the plane, jump back in the oops, peace out. Mm. The audacity. Point number one, it was a cheap ass Zara jacket. Now I ain't hating on Zara because Zara has 
giving me many a fashion. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are owned by H and M, but oh, okay, they're the monkey people. They're the monkey people, ooh, ooh, and ooh, I'm ooh, not ooh. proud when I go in there, you but sure? I do go in there. <laughs> okay, guys, all right, I'm just gonna be honest. Black people love sale, honey. <laughs> monkey, no monkey. Black people love a sale. <laughs> I mean, Jay-Z and Beyonce give us a store that got fashion. It went shopping. Maybe we wouldn't have to be king of the jump. Okay. <laughs> Old us that way. Yes. Okay? So, I, you know, bizarre. But the jacket's like $36. Okay. She's normally known for wearing more higher end fashion. Uh, a Scotta, uh, Anything that doesn't cost $36. <laughs> so everybody's thinking that this jacket was intentionally placed on her back so she could say, I really don't care. Yeah, I, I thought more. I thought she was a little different, but she's the same. She's cut from the same cloth as her husband. I'm sorry. I would have to agree because I guess I thought she was a little bit different. You know, because she swats his little head away. I'm thinking, oh, okay, she really don't like him. She just got finagled into this situation. But bitch, you wore that jacket to go see the little kids. This is fucked up. Mm -hmm. it's super fucked up. So you know, as I'm being the person who I am. I tend to take tragic tragedy. Mm-hmm. Add a little humor. Okay. Turn it back up. I'm not the comedy. only one. Sounds so, like comedy. Sounds like comedy. I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. Some people on Twitter have taken to like rewriting these jackets. Right. So, you know, they'll say, you know, November is coming. One of them said November is coming. So that represents like we can vote these mofos out. Let's vote. So I thought of a lovely game we could play okay. where we take a few celebrities into precarious situations okay. and rewrite their jackets. Oh, let's write, honey. <laughs> yeah. What would their jackets be? Let's write, honey. Let's start with Melania. Oh my goodness. What would her jacket say? What would her jacket say? So like if it's just Melania on a regular day after all this has happened, so she's walking around right now, what would her jacket say? How about uh, I'm an immigrant. Ooh. Put me in the cage. Whoop! How about that? How about that? Did she come in from, she came in from another country? Mm-hmm. Yes. And Donald made her, did, and now we the, don't know how legal it was. Maybe he hooked her up. Maybe she didn't go through the same, you know, path the that they wanted The would be if she got her U.S. citizenship through that marriage. Now that would be the T. Oh, okay. We need to get to I don't have time to do that now. But we'll have to research that. We'll have to look into that because mm -hmm. that would be the shade. I like that. Okay, so Melania's new jacket would say, I'm an immigrant. Put me in a cage. Mm. Boom. Bam. Gone. Sell so that in Zara for $35, $36. Yes. Okay. Yes. What about Uncle Quincy? Uncle Quincy Jones. <laughs> Who read it out, Michael? Read it out, Michael, Richard Pryor. He read it out, Marvin Gaye. Oh he was like, God. he takes it up the ass. <gasps> He's mean as fuck. He steals people's ideas. Wow. I believe it about Michael though. Well, you know, I mean, everybody's greedy. <laughs> so what? This is everybody's true. Everybody's greedy. And he, I look at it as he was a smart and shrewd businessman. You know how many white people stole black people's uh, music and profited off of that? Who got absolutely nothing? Generations of money go to their yeah. families instead of the black families? Okay, so he's a shrewd businessman. Quincy need to go on with his white women <laughs> and leave Michael Jackson alone. 22 and counting. Maybe that's his jacket. Remember he said he had like 22 <laughs> girlfriends? Yes. Or, or dementia. Or <laughs> 22 and counting. Or dementia. Or dementia. You don't know. Dementia king or something. I don't know. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's gone crazy. Is there a pill for dementia? No. It, should, it will be that. If there was a pill for dementia, it will be like dementia popping or whatever yes. it's called. <laughs> like yes. Addy popping. Okay. 22 and counting plus dementia. <laughs> what about Donald Trump? Oh. Donald On any Trump. given day. Oh. He's just on his jacket, it would say, the, 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 the lie. lie is a new truth. Ooh. The lie is the new truth. The lie is the new truth. Because that, that is what his jacket should say on it. That should be like, you know, in God we trust, the lie is the new truth. The lie is the new truth. So that means, should I start lying? I mean, it's the American way now. I mean, you know, put the lie out there and they'll believe it. 
Don't give me permission to lie. I'll be like, the millions are swimming in my bank account. Yeah, why not? It's the truth. I Google myself. <laughs> now that you mentioned that, just to see how much I work. It said four million. Ah, <laughs> yeah. But it failed to say a monopoly money. <laughs> I was like, four million? Child, please. Yeah, what's, I forgot what that thing is called, but I Google myself. I don't know why I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm nobody, but I Google Freddie Renown and said I'm worth four million dollars. You need to give me that app because Girl, I'm curious. I was insulted by the brokenness that I live and dwell in. Okay, so here's another person. Our fake ass daddy who now has disgraced the family. I thought you were talking about my daddy. <laughs> my daddy shady, okay? Uh, so I was like, mm, what, what do you do now? How did you find out about my daddy? <laughs> shady Tag. He always wants something for, I was with y'all, I stayed with my daddy. <laughs> That's what you were supposed to do. That's what you were supposed to do. Daddy. Okay. Stop wanting an award. No, we talking about our fake ass daddy. Bill. Bill Cosby, oh my goodness. So we're talking about Bill Cosby prime jello pudding pops. Okay? <laughs> not the not this Bill Cosby. Prime jello pudding pops. Back in the day. Zua, zua, zua. <laughs> Wait a minute. What did he give the women? What did he give them? <laughs> he gave them quaaludes. Quaaludes? <laughs> Yeah, because Quaaludes make you real. But I'm using my, my knowledge of Quaaludes from that movie with um, Leonardo DiCaprio where he played like the Wall Street person or whatever. Wolf on Wall Street. Wolf on Wall Street. No, no, no. Where he was like, it wasn't Wolf on Wall Street. It was the one where he was like the Ponzi scheme guy. I can't think of the name of it. But he was taking Quaaludes and it made him real And in this movie, he tried to drive his Lamborghini and in his mind, he was- Catch me if you can. Nope. Oh, Actually, I don't know. This is like 2017. So they get so many opportunities, honey. We can't, we can't keep- I mean, if it was Denzel, we would okay. count it on our hand. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. Training, yeah. training day. <laughs> so, quaaludes make you sleepy, so it probably was quaaludes. So, qua yeah, so what? Pudding? Quaalude pudding? Quaalude pudding, anyone? Oh, I like that. <laughs> Quaalude pudding anyone on his jacket. Or we could go ratchet and be like, you wanna suck on this pudding pop? Oh. <laughs> yes. I mean, depending on how That is funny. You wanna suck on this pudding pop? <laughs> right. You'd be like, zazu, zazu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the so last, sad. last but not least, a new fave on the scene. Okay. Cardi B. Hmm. This is Cardi B after she's given birth, leaving the hospital <laughs> with her baby. What's her jacket say? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> and it has like fringe tongues hanging off, so it's just like ah, just a tongue hang. Oh no! It just oh, it yes. should say fourteen point <laughs> fifty nine minutes of fame. <laughs> That's like, what her jacket should time say. Count, like a time, yes, a time counter. 14.59 minutes. Run it out, Because okay. somebody said they saw her performing and nine months pregnant. And I have a belief that she probably knows that if she sits down and has that baby, this little ride baby. I don't know. I has feel like ride. she's going to work. She's thirsty. I mean, even though it should have been past her ride, I hate to say, I mean, I'm just, I, I think she's, I'm gonna be honest, I don't care. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's like, come on. Cause somebody was, I was talking to somebody about this and they were like, just think about Two Chains. Cause like Two Chains, when he dropped again, when he came back from the titty boy days, he came back and he was like, yeah. and now he still has sustained his career, but it ain't. The rap game ain't long for those who are talented. Yeah. Now can you imagine if you're not how long your stay is going to be? Cheers. Good luck. Good luck. And you know what? And that'll bring us to the final cheers. Okay. You know what? This has been a fabulous wine induced. I enjoyed myself. I'm so glad you came, Freddie. You Thank you for having me and digging me from the grave Child. and bringing me back to life. <laughs> we got shovels. We got that Frankenstein. It's alive. <laughs> <laughs>
today. I am the true ID investigation. Honey. <laughs> she dug my bones up and found out I was like, why I have been in this world. Cause I remember these balls was funny as dogs. Thank you. Thank yes, Freddie, right. thank you for coming. Oh you are God. always thank welcome you. here. Thank you. Thank when you. you come back, if you don't come back, I'm gonna bring you back. Oh my God, you've got the biggest shovel ever. You know, the bring shovel of love. The shovel of love. <laughs> oh my God, we've had too much wine, obviously. <laughs> I think thank you, so Sean. Much. You guys, Sean I have to make cute. an announcement about Sean. Sean is cute. They yeah. even put him on the front of the camera. Look, see, I. Y'all ain't seen them, look, look, it's nothing to write on. Average. Averagely fine. <laughs> Averagely fine. Oh, Averagely fine. Boy. Boy. No, we'll get Sean on the camera because Sean is leaving us. No, I haven't told anybody because I'm really in denial about it, but he's moving back to California. And so. Wait a minute, how can you do all those things you promised? We're gonna make it work. Broken promises. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say California knows how to party. California. Are you from California? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so depressed. It is depressing, but we're gonna keep keep okay. it moving. We're gonna pour some more wine. Okay, yeah. Let's let's wind it out. <laughs> we're gonna let's wind it out. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, microphones. Thank you, listeners. This yes. is Super Puppy Podcast, <laughs> and we are out. Chicago Sam. Coming with the wind. The Super Puppy, Super Puppy Podcast, Super Puppy Podcast, the best podcast, Super Puppy Podcast, the best. This is Super Podcast, Puppy Podcast, the bus podcast. Better than the rest, Super Puppy Podcast, bust your shots in your ass, Super Puppy Podcast. Don't sleep, y'all.